Our next speaker is uh, representing another German funding agency, the DAAD, the German Academic Exchange Service. Very easy, easy name. Uh, Georg Farveen. Uh, he is the director of the DAD Information Center here in Bangkok, and he will give us an overview, I think, over the research structure in Germany, and then, of course, specifically the funding opportunities of the DAD. Yeah. Uh, good. Well, morning, everyone. Um, I'm glad to hear, be here, and um, well, my colleagues had the a pleasure of introducing you to just one or two or maybe three programs. And now I'm, I'm standing here representing 400 universities and uh, 200 and something funding opportunities. So I will do my best um, to give you an overview. So we're just um, giving the slides another second. Yeah, well, um, I, I could just take the chance to, to introduce myself because otherwise I always forget that point. So um, my name is Georg Favayen and I'm based uh, here in Bangkok. We have a permanent office here in Bangkok uh, of the German Academic Exchange Service and our, um, well, very broad uh, mission is to, uh, well, connect Thai academia with German academia. So that ranges really from, from student level over uh, young researchers to uh, professors and university administration. So should you have any question regarding uh, a specific German university or, I don't know, hey, which university could I approach with a question regarding this and that? Uh, so, whatever it is, as soon as the words university and Germany appear in your question, um, then I'm probably the guy to get in touch with in Thailand. I, I can't promise you that I'll always have an answer, but I'll do my very best to help you find an answer. So, um, I... I uh, also promised to say a few words about the uh, Alexander von Humboldt Foundation because their representative could not make the little uh, swap from Monday to Friday that we did with this um, event. So, well, um, ah, brilliant. Okay, so you can't see Germany. That's actually a nice puzzle. Join the dots and you'll have Germany. Um, because, well, what I want to show you is that universities are very well spread across the country. So, uh, unlike Thailand, for instance, uh, there are really excellent universities all over the country and they are spread pretty evenly. And um, those universities form the DAD. And uh, as we have heard already in the European Research Council, uh, all decisions in DAD are taken um, by, um, well, basically German professors, yeah? or sometimes in binational committees or whatever, but um, the important decisions are merely, purely academical. And uh, the selection criterion, just like with the ERC is in very most cases, in most programs, also on um, academic excellence. So, in total, it's, it's about 400 universities, academies, whatever, of higher education, and uh, 238 of them are members of DAD. Uh, we have just turned 90 years, and uh, we have proper statistics for the last 60 years, and during those 60 years, we have um, given scholarships to about 2 million people. We have sent a bit more than a million of Germans abroad, and we have uh, taken in a bit less than a million foreigners, which is um, quite impressive. And to give you an idea of what that means uh, for today, or in this case, last year, uh, you can see that uh, nearly 50,000 uh, foreigners went to Germany 
and a bit more than 70,000 Germans went abroad with a scholarship from DAD. And of course, um, most importantly, where is the, that's oh, is too many funny features. There must be a pointer somewhere on this machine. Whatever, you see Asia Pacific, it's 8,000 something, and we're like 10 buttons on, ah, in the middle, brilliant. Okay, so you can see Asia Pacific, um, we have a bit more uh, foreigners coming to Germany than Germans coming here, but the balance is not bad. And we have about 300 um, Thai coming to Germany and 200 and something Germans coming to Thailand. That's just those on scholarships, right? So I have proper numbers for free movers as well. So we have nearly 1,000 Thai students in Germany right now. Germany is a DAD is also the, um, uh, how do you call that, national agency, right, for the EU programs. Uh, so if you decide, yes, I want to go um, to Germany, um, you could also consider all those uh, EU programs uh, like Erasmus Mundus, Erasmus Plus. So don't shy away if something starts with EU. It does not mean that you're not eligible. There are quite a number of international outreach programs hidden in these um, programs as well. So that's our network. Um, that's, that's why I hardly get out of Thailand, because there is already somebody wherever you go. Um, we have 500 and something uh, lecturers. That's the, the smallest uh, representation, uh, typically at one university. Uh, we have information centers like here in Bangkok. That's, well, if you count the blue dots, it should be something like 55. And then we have regional offices with a broader mandate. So the next one here would be Hanoi or Jakarta. Um, so, the uh, Humboldtians, I'm uh, supposed to talk about the Humboldt fellows as well. The Humboldtians are um, a bit more decentralized, so they don't have an um, information center or something like that. But every former Humboldtian is supposed to spread the news and be also, well, a contact point for anyone coming up with questions. And uh, so in total, there are 280 Humboldtians here in Southeast Asia. And you can see that Thailand has a pretty decent share of these really prestigious fellowships um, in, the, in the past, and I, I, I hope they'll even uh, expand that in the future. So, um, that was the in institutional overview of what we're doing and who we are. And now uh, the overview about all of Germany, which is asking too much, but anyway. We have about a thousand institutions doing research, which is pretty good. You can see all those numbers. You're not going to remember them anyway. That's, um, I've been told you can't take up more than three or so during one presentation. So try to forget those numbers. Um, the, 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 the slide I like most is the one to come next, because there is a, a, a hidden fact that um, I have just discovered yesterday. So you can try your best to, to find the, the Easter egg, let's say. Um, yeah, well, I, I have put like all those companies there uh, because research actually takes place most of the time, not in the universities and not in the famous uh, Max Planck Institutes or at the uh, Fraunhofer. Um, but most of the research actually takes place in the industry. Um, and um, the, the hidden fact that you might not have known before, to become one of the top 10 German institutions, it's best to have a round logo. <laughs> I mean, honestly, look at the, look at the top 10, right? It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, 
Um, so we have learned at least one interesting fact about uh, success in German uh, industry and research. Um, I mean, at all those places, there's lots of, lots of research going on. I have, um, well, of course, well, we already have heard about Fraunhofer, then Helmholtz Association, Leibniz, and Max Planck. That's the, the big research associations in Germany. Uh, we have also the uh, academies of sciences. And uh, then I have picked just two groups of universities um, to, to symbolize the broad university landscape here. That's the uh, TU9. That's a group of technical universities, the most research intensive technical universities in Germany. And you have the German U15. That's uh, the most research intensive universities, less on the applied side, less on the technical side compared to the uh, TU9. So if you don't want to flicker through all those 400 universities, that might be the starting point if you look at Germany. Now, the question always is, hey, but how do I get there? Who's going to pay for it? Um, so I, um, I was asked to present very briefly the digest of our 200 and something programs. So uh, from DAD side, we have um, a few options on master's level. So this is closed to only what you find here. If you come up with something super exciting, but it does not fit into these three groups, I'm sorry, can't help you. So, I mean, most of you are more into the uh, doctoral level research anyway, so I just flip slides. Uh, for the PhD level, we do uh, cooperate with the Thai Research Fund, more specifically with the uh, Golden Jubilee. And um, so there is a close cooperation uh, for research stays within a uh, research project. So a scientist from Thailand would like to cooperate with the German university. You can apply for that, and then he can take uh, a few doctoral candidates with him or her. It is slightly complicated. Yeah. So you need a Golden Jubilee uh, TRF uh, accepted, rated, whatever, professor and you need the German partner, and you have to apply twice. I think it's easier to apply for a research stay for up to 10 months, or for a sandwich PhD, uh, or for a PhD under um, binational supervision, um, or just for the full PhD in Germany. Yeah? Basically, anything between a few months and up to four years is uh, fundable, and this is open to anyone from any field um, here from Thailand. Yeah? So the, the selection is just based on academic excellence of both the research project and the track record so far. We have um, a few options on postdoctoral level. So, uh, most of these are together with uh, the Humboldt Foundation. You see, originally the idea was that DAD supports people until they have their PhD, and then we take care of our alumni. Yeah, but if anybody comes in later, then it's Alexander von Humboldt, right? That was the contact point between the cutoff point between DAD and Humboldt. Uh, but now we also have postdoc research stays within DAD, that's the first point, and uh, from there you can, ha well, choose different options with uh, the Humboldt Foundation. Very well equipped, prestigious um, fellowships. Uh, once again, slide a bit like the ERF. Um, so it can be individual or it can be a, like the Sofia Kovalevskaya, 
uh, award that is a, a huge thing where you set up your own research group and um, you're pretty free in how to spend this money on research uh, for a five-year project available for young researchers or more experienced researchers once again. Just one more, one more slide. Uh, lots of logos again, so I've been collecting many logos for that presentation. Um, there's quite a bit going on on that slide, just too much movement anyway. Uh, I, I still have it here to to give you an idea of the, the broad landscape of all the things that you potentially could look at if you want to get funding. Um, once again, the four big research societies, but then you have the uh, DLR, that's the German uh, Aerospace Research Agency. We have the uh, DFG, Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft, the German Research Society. Um, all kind of donors, some of them related to industry, some not, um, like Robert Bosch, of course, or Fritz Thyssen, or Henkel, or Volkswagen, or Evonik. You see there's lots of money coming from the industry, but then it is really, it's a foundation. So they give the money and then the foundation is running the whole project. And the, the one good news about this confusing slide is what you need to remember is only this uh, fundingguide.de. You will find all the offers of all those foundations, including DAD, including uh, Humboldt, etc. You'll find all these offers in this one database. So we have really tried to create a, a one-stop shop where you, where you find all that. So you don't have to remember all those names and you don't have to remember all the different programs. Uh, just go to fundingguide.de and then you can tell them, yeah, like I, I already have a PhD and I am from Thailand. And then you get like 30, I think, results. Now you say you can go through the results and pick whatever suits your needs best. Yeah, um, that was the uh, Tour de France through um, German research. I really thank you for your attention. Keep in mind, to be successful in Germany, you'll need a round logo. Um, <laughs> and um, if you want to know more about research in Germany, including all the silly questions of, hey, what's the weather like in Germany? And uh, how do I get there? What about my social security? I mean, all those practical questions. Yeah, you've, you can find answers on this uh, research in Germany.org. Uh, um, I think .de also works, but this leads directly to the English version. You'll find answers there. And of course, you can come to see me and my colleagues uh, in the office, um, MRT Lumpini, Soy Goethe. Yeah, so thank you very much for your attention and um, questions are more than welcome. Thank you so much, Georg. Any immediate questions for our DAD representative? Study in Germany, research in Germany, lots of opportunities. I always get the questions, do you only eat potatoes in Germany? Do you only eat potatoes in Germany? Uh, no, we also eat sausages. Good. But <laughs> jokes, jokes about up. German sausages are the worst. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> yes, uh, I think this is also an important question. The German language is not easy to pick up. Is that a problem if you want to do research in Germany? No, for research there's no need to speak German. It will help to get along in daily life, just like a few words of Thai help if you live in Thailand. But um, neither for, for PhD nor for, even, not even for the master's programs that I mentioned. They are all entirely taught in English. You can do your PhD in English. Um, and as long as you find a supervisor who is happy to supervise you in English, which should 
be the case in about 98% of them? No. No. So uh, for, pure, for, for the research side, I think in most labs the, the common language will be English anyway. So, no. Thank you. The, the Humboldt fellowships, uh, to just add this information, also provide language training, by the way. It's not a necessity, yeah. but as part of the fellowship, you also receive language yeah. training. Same, same applies to DAD fellowships. So if you, if you have a scholarship for, let's say, three years PhD, or basically anything up from uh, anything more than half a year, we will provide language training on top of it. So if you apply this October and we'll have an interview in uh, November, let's say, you get the result in February, you should board a plane in April or May, and you'll have, with your full scholarship already paid, you'll have um, three to six months of language training, depends on what you need and if you already know some German or not or whatever. Uh, so you'll have these extra months without your scholarship clock ticking down. Yeah? So you just get these months on top of, your, uh, of the scholarship. Thank you so much. I think with this, we leave it. Thank you so much, Georg. Thank you.